back into studio into a very interesting discussion do you have a hobby have you tried using it um, to ride through your financial freedom are you using your hobby to make money well in studio I have two young people who are actually doing that and it is amazing for them joining me in studio Sally Aganda she cooks really well I will show you photos later on or we can get you to cook sometime and uh, of course Eric Murethi we call her sticky him sticky and he is an artist graffiti everything all you see here is eric's work thank you very much guys for coming in uh sally good morning how are you morning thank you akisa uh -huh. thank you for having me so what do you do what is this hobby that everyone is talking about on, on, on social media uh what i do most of the time actually is cooking uh, i have a passion for cooking catering so i decided to change the passion um uh, into paper mm -hmm. um uh, I decided that this is something I can do to earn a little extra aside mm -hmm. from what I do from 8 to 5, my mm -hmm. 8 to 5 job. So that's why I decided to venture into cooking, especially during the weekends, um, and also cooking for people who don't have the time to do so, especially now when uh, people go to work like um, from Monday to Friday and some people on Saturdays. Bachelors mostly. Yes, bachelors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I decided, yeah, why not do it? Um, mm -hmm. So I find a day maybe during the week, uh, weekends, um, um, I go to their houses. I can do. I do the shopping for them for groceries. Uh, just call me their fridge manager, by the way. Wow. Yeah. So I do the groceries. I give them the menu, um, and I like focusing on healthy meals, especially mm -hmm. during the week. So I give them the menu that can be rotated maybe in two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and then uh, I go ahead and do all the cooking and the storage. Yes. So that's that's what I found passion in, and that's what I love to do. Well, so. I can call you to come into my house, decide what's going to be in my fridge, decide what's going, what I'm going to eat all week, and you cook all that? Exactly, yes, that's what I do. Uh, I actually uh, plan your kitchen meals for you, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's what I do, yeah. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Eric, um, you've been drawing for as long as you can remember, I believe. True. But you've turned it into a business now. Yeah. How are you finding it? Well, it's uh, it's always a misery. Like every every day, you just wake up to yeah. you know new ideas, and you have to like solve them on canvas. It's a it's a job that uh, you know pretty much uh, relies on being inspired, being in the zone, mm -hmm. trying to go crazy, trying to think of something that's just out of the box. It's just, how how often are you in the zone? Uh, like every day, <laughs> every single day. Wow. Yeah. So it's basically what I used to do ever since I was a kid. But you reach a point where you just ask yourself, is it, uh, are you just the artist who's going to be doing just beautiful things and people say it's beautiful? Are you going to turn that into passion, into something that will make you, you know, make your life better? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's been four years, it's been a thrill, and it's just amazing because every, every day is just a challenge. I don't know what to do, but at the end of the day, you just, at the end of the day, uh, you come up with something new, something nice, something that you're going to sell maybe. What do you draw most of the time? Well, I... <laughs> I try putting myself in a category, rather I try boxing myself and say, I'm a show artist, I paint people, you know, I do graffiti, I do illustrations, I do animation, so... So you literally do everything? I do everything <laughs> that's artsy. But what do you like most? Well, graffiti, graffiti is just a part of me, because then again, it brings out the adrenaline rush, it has a lot of energy in it, you, you know, it's hip-hop inspired and mm -hmm. I'm pretty much, uh, I love hip-hop, and uh, well, it's just my nature, I'm a rebel, so just try venting out my anger, my frustrations, mm -hmm. my emotions, it's just expressing them on canvas. Uh, it's a good way of being a rebel. It brings you money, so. Yeah, well, true, 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 true. <laughs> It's yeah. no loss. And you can't get arrested for that. You know, and you can't get arrested yeah. for it. That's yeah. a smart move you made there. Uh, thanks a lot. Sally, did you always know you're going to do this? Did you go to school to study how to cook? Just take us through that journey. Uh, not really. Uh, I, 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 I uh, I've not gone to school uh, to study how to cook. Um, as I said before, it's just a passion that I developed. Um, when you have those free Sundays, even when I was still staying at home with my parents, and um, I will just have a different way of doing, you know, of doing the meals, because we used to have house shows, of course. So there's a different way of, I used to do it differently. So that's how my talent and my passion developed, slowly by slowly, day by day. Because mm -hmm. um, um, even when I'm free, uh, up to now, uh, I like Googling and um, finding out uh, different recipes of how to do things. And I really like focusing on African meals, Kenyan meals as such. Uh, so that's how I came to develop my passion as a person. 
Um, and I believe so long as you have the talent, you don't really have to go to school mm -hmm. uh, to get the papers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's something that, um, it's inward. It's, mm -hmm. it's something within you. It's something that you really want to do. So I believe you can achieve it. You don't have to go to school. You can achieve it. You can learn by yourself. So that's how it came about. So what did you study in school? I studied finance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I studied banking and finance. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, even in my eight to five job, um, I'm a sales and marketing person. Mm -hmm. uh, even in cooking, I need to do sales and marketing. Yeah. So, so it goes hand in hand. Yes, yeah. it, it, is, it goes hand in hand. And um, I'm actually uh, very good with it. Uh, and I like it. Siki, have you studied to be a professional artist or this is all God given? I uh, never studied. The only education, art education I received was in primary school before, you know, the old education system. And pretty much been just learning from people, meeting different mentors in different fields. And you, you know, like uh, from just sharing and observing, you know, you feel like you can do it if everybody else is doing it who's an artist. So it's, it's been a journey. Mm -hmm. it's been so a journey. what did you study? I what? studied media. All right. And how did that end up? It's the only artist I did. <laughs> but it helps you communicate with your clients, no? Yep, it does. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sally, you have an 8 to 5 job. How do you do juggle between your sales and marketing job and then you have to cook and you have all these calls? Hey, hey Sally, hey, I don't have dinner today. So how, how do you juggle that? Um, uh, that's actually a challenge, yes, uh, because uh, now what I do is focus, I focus, I mostly focus on my weekends, mm -hmm. that is on Saturdays and the Sundays. Uh, so I have to, especially on Saturdays, I have to look for a time frame. Maybe I can come to your house for like two hours, uh, I go to another house like for another two hours, uh, so that I can be able to balance, um, I can be able to balance both. Mm -hmm. My eight to five job, I concentrate on it from Monday to Fridays. And then on the weekends, this is when I can actually uh, work on my orders. Um, at the moment, I have a small um, number of people. Uh, I have not um, gone large as, as I would want to yeah. because of the time frames. And also, if I decide, yes, I'd like to hire people to help me out. But at the same time, you know, cooking, um, there's a different way maybe I measure my spices, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a different way maybe someone else does something. It will take time for me now to have to train them to do that. Mm -hmm. But these are things that I'm looking out uh, for in the future. These are things that I'm working in. Yeah, do you ever cook for people on weekdays, ever? Uh, once in a while, once in a while. Um, maybe one person, because at the end of the day, it's going to be hectic for me. Because now, even after I have done the cooking at the end of the day, I go back home. It's tiring because you're up, up on your feet like the whole time. Mm -hmm. So once in a while, I do that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Eric, for so long, um, things like being an artist, being a dancer, being a musician, those are things our parents didn't see as jobs. Like when you True. told your parent that I want to be an artist, they will ask you, are you serious? Yeah. Is, is that really a job? How supportive were... My parents, my yes, folks. Yes, yeah. Well, they were a bit supportive. My a grandfather bit. mostly, yeah. <laughs> but they were skeptical because then again, you know, being an artist is not something serious. Mm. So people just have that vision of an artist, somebody with bad hair, you know, well, dirty clearly. clothes. Well, <laughs> clearly. I have yeah. bad hair. They have having bad hair this day, since day one. Uh -huh. So, you know, they have that you know, dim uh, vision of somebody who's just struggling and all that. But you forget at the end of the day, this is a talent that you're born with. Yeah. And that uh, God surely did not create you to just suffer with what you have. Yeah. He, he just made it so that you could make something out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been having artists all, uh, ever since time immemorial, yeah. the Picassos, the Da Vinci's and all that. And they've been pretty much been making amazing artworks that, uh, you know, we still look up to, mm -hmm. up to now. So, but I come to understand that most of our folks don't know really about the whole world of art. They, they, just, they just want the best for us. They want us to be successful. Mm -hmm. And the only way to be successful is maybe that which they have seen yeah. in somebody yeah. else, or maybe what mm -hmm. they've been through. You know, they say education is the key, but at times they also forget that talent can take you places. Yeah. So I think it's just high time for, <clears throat> for, letting, uh, for the parents to just wake up and realize that uh, a passion is also something that's very important in someone's life. Mm -hmm. so, so are they supportive now? Uh, they are supportive. Can I mean, you confidently say that being an artist now is that you, job that parents don't think it is? Yeah, yeah. Most parents are always just open because uh, at, at the moment, you know, you meet parents who just tell you, you know, my kid is in 
class five and apparently they are a good artist. I want them to become maybe an artist yeah. one, one, nice. one time. So, well, it's, the, the trend is changing. We've come a long way. Do you think we've come a long way now we're, that you can even get parents who say that they would want their oh, We've come a long way, but we're still a long way to go. Because mm -hmm. then again, also our art industry, especially in Kenya, is pretty much growing. Mm -hmm. You know, people are still coming to terms like, uh, to like, uh, you know, I can buy a painting for the house. Mm -hmm. I don't have to like just buy a TV and sofa set and say, well, my, fa my house is furnished. I can, can always buy a painting. Because then again, you know, uh, a painting has an aesthetic value. Because when you look at it, you can also, you can feel maybe something, there's a message the yeah. artist was just trying to pass to you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the trend is changing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you happy with how the trend I'm, is? I'm so, so happy. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't have, you have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Sally, I want to, s you, you have a fa Facebook page. Just, yes. just, just tell us more about that. Uh, my Facebook page, uh, The Sunday Branching by Sally. Uh, I came up with that idea because Sundays are a lazy day for people. Um, most of the people wake up at 11, noon, mm -hmm. and even those who wake up early to go to church don't really want to uh, do a lot in the house. So I decided I'll be making a brunch for my house um, that is a combination of breakfast and lunch, heavy meals. And then um, what I do is deliver. So uh, what I do is post on the page. I post options. I give options of menus that they can choose from. Um, and then I get calls because uh, I like uh, having a cut off by 7 a.m. on Sundays so that I can be able to deliver mm -hmm. um, for, uh, food for people who can't be able to do it on Sundays. Yeah. And, and I, that's a need. That's a need that it's there. You know, um, you're tired. You don't want to do anything on Sunday. Yeah, so had I, a busy night. You're busy. Mm -hmm. You had a busy night. Maybe you went out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be there to fill in that void. Yeah, that's what I do. How, how is that working out for you? Uh, it is good, um, but you know, there are challenges at the end of the day, yeah? Uh, but the thing is, uh, I have to be consistent about it, and also, I have to be, you have to find different ways of doing things. Um, you have to be, it has to be exciting, you know? Um, I can have like 30 clients this Sunday, uh, the next Sunday, I can have like two clients. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be, you have to be exciting, yeah. you have to, uh, bring some magical twists yeah, huh? in your menu. Mm -hmm. Find something different, something that's going to excite them. Yeah. What do people like most? People like pork, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> people like I, pork. I, I'm guilty. <laughs> yes. I'm yes. guilty. People like pork, mm -hmm. pork, pork, pork. So in my menus, I always have to have pork. Yes. So yeah, and chicken once mm -hmm. in a while. Mm -hmm. Yes. W what is your clientele like? My clientele. Uh, the young people, mm -hmm. I can say the young people um, who have like started out, um, uh, age range from around 25 to 35, mm -hmm. people who don't have families mm -hmm. mostly, or uh, people with small families, uh, yes, because, and, and mostly um, the male. <laughs> the ones yes, who don't the, like bachelors, cooking, the bachelors, I yes. insist. <laughs> yes, they're the ones who don't like cooking, yeah. doing dishes, mm -hmm. as in their kitchen is just there because our house has to have a kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so. Mostly, those are my clientels. Yeah. So you go cook for them, then do the dishes for them? Yes, I do everything. Have like to you're a godsend to all the bachelors out there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so I all have they to have do to everything. do is pick something in the fridge, warm it, eat. Yes, yes. pick, warm, and, and that's throw it. away the plate or wait for you <laughs> the next week to come wash. No, no, you can't keep dishes for one week. <laughs> oh, have you met guys? They actually can. They actually <laughs> can. <laughs> Eric. Yeah. Can I call you Sticky? I'm sorry, it's yeah, it's my sticky. name. Yeah. Uh, what is your clientele like? Well, it's diverse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you know, it ranges from you know people from all you know different age, age categories. Yeah. You know, people from all walks of life. You know, like back in the day, people used to sell paintings to Azungus. Then yes, it was it yes. was all about just painting the shidas in Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> paint a woman who's carrying maybe two kids. Mm -hmm. These are elephant in the water. background, water and yes. all that. You know, because then again, the guys who, the, most of the guys who came to teach us about art told us the thing that's going to sell is the poverty of Africa. But you forget that Africa is the motherland. And what do you know about the motherland? It has everything. It's beautiful. It has, it has everything. It's rich. It's wealthy. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, I think I pretty much cut my niche into just painting those youthful things that people just deem maybe re rebel. It's fashion. It's just fashion. It's just it's painting cool. fashion. It's cool. Yeah. So and you find it uh, very amazing when you find a client who's just in their in their fifties buying a painting because he thinks this reminds me of my youth. Have you gotten that? A lot. 
How does that make you feel? It makes you, you feel nice. It's not even because of the money. It's because somebody just loves your artwork. It moves you a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's really what keeps inspiring, you know, people, it keeps inspiring me to create more artworks. Because I, I tend to believe that um, if you have an idea, if you love it, you, you know, you pursue it, make something out of it, somebody who's going to love it more and is going to want to invest in it and going to want to have part of it. So, yeah. You, you've mentioned something very important, that artists in the back days used to paint Africa in a light, in, in a bad light, yeah. the poverty, all the wrong things that are happening in, yeah. this, in this continent, yeah. forgetting about the positive things, yeah. the positive energy yeah. that comes out of it. Why do you think they dwelt so much into the negative? Well, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the miseries I tried to answer. But you know, like, you know, a little bit while back, we, we used to be, used to have that mentality of, if, if something is not, you know, doesn't speak that angry, that anger, that bad feeling cannot bite because it doesn't have value. Mm -hmm. But up to now, you know, it becomes a point where I just have to like focus on positives. It's, and now, do you think artists are now getting away from that? Yeah, like, uh, from what I've seen, like, most people don't even, okay, uh, in the first when you don't know anything, you just feel like you want to paint Maasai market stuff, you know, <laughs> she does and all that. But when it reaches a point where you ask yourself, what about the other stuff? What about the good stuff? What about those ideas, those silly ideas you think are, uh, that are silly? Mm -hmm. You know, what about that inner kid in you? Because, you know, if you, if you ask a, a random kid to paint, mm -hmm. Whatever they want, mm -hmm. they'll paint whatever is in their mind. Yeah. Be it positive, be it happy, be it rainbows and all that. Mm -hmm. Why not be like kids? Why not be self-expressive? You know. I would want us. I would want you to take us through some of your paintings. Okay. And okay. What what zone you are in? What you were <laughs> thinking? I don't know whether you can zoom into some yeah. of these uh, paintings here by Sticky, yeah. like the shoes. Yeah. Right. Let's start with the shoes. Whoa, okay. Whoa. The shoes. Well. Uh, I, I do believe the shoes have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at somebody's shoes, you can easily tell these guys, you know, the type of personality they are. Yeah. You can tell if they, uh, the, you know, if they work in a casual environment, mm -hmm. if they walk around a, a, a lot, if they, if they love their shoes. And also, you know, like when you see old shoes, sometimes you see uh, she does. And other times you see somebody who's maybe trying to be rugged because mm -hmm. maybe that's their personality. Rugged is cool, actually. Ask Sally. She, yeah, true, true, <laughs> I true, went true, through true. her page to go. She does that a lot. Yeah. What about this? Oh, the, the lady. It's yes. a series called yes. Watuna Viatu. I tried, you know. Yes, the woman. Yeah. Yeah, because then again, there is just shoe straps, and then there's the face of the lady, mm -hmm. the cool funky hair, and all that. Mm -hmm. It's just basically showing us that maybe, maybe we're just like our shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, watuna viatu. Yeah. That's basically, what it is. Yeah. 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 The other one. Oh, the lady. The, yes. the half face. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just you know when you have so many pieces of a puzzle, mm -hmm. you know, many, many jigsaw pieces. Yes. So there's always that one piece that's gonna complete the puzzle. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is the piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The final piece. The final piece into yeah. the puzzle. Yeah. And the and the last one. The, oh, the lady, one, the yeah. lady in, in the colorful sweater. Yes. You know, for me, uh, at first I was and just painting. Yeah. Yeah. I was mm -hmm. just painting a lady who just had colorful sweater, but uh, halfway I thought that maybe she's African, and maybe the different colors maybe represent the different races of the world. Shows maybe unity or something like that, but you know people have their different in interpretations of painting. That may be my, interpret uh, my interpretation, and maybe the thought I'm having on that painting. But somebody else may just see it and say, "Well, it's colorful." Somebody may see something else. Yeah. Do you ever start painting? I've always wanted to ask artists this. Yeah. Do you ever start painting something, and you have you have someone in mind that you've started doing it, and you're thinking, "This is yes. like this face. Is this a familiar face, or you just painted mm. anything?" No, I just painted anything. It's not a familiar face. How but do you paint a face you've not seen? Well, it's just inspiration because <laughs> you know you sketch a lot. It reaches a point whereby you don't even re you don't recognize the faces or even the people you're, you're painting. Mm -hmm. But it may be people you've met in your life. It may be just because your your hand was just moving. I let it just work on the canvas. Mm -hmm. I don't stress on it. You know, the hardest part of a painting is always coming up with the idea. It's the hardest part. Painting is just easy because then again you just have your colors, just mix them, mm -hmm. be wild. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't come, it, if it doesn't come out the way you want. You just take a walk, come back, just to paint it. You know, it's just a process. Yeah. But the hardest part is coming up with the idea, which mm -hmm. is like, it's gonna take. It's gonna even take you months. Wow, painting come up can with even, an idea. Yeah. Oh, the, okay.
I'm, I'm still reeling from, <laughs> like you can take months to come up with an idea. Yeah. What is the hardest bit about what you do, Sally? Um, as you said before, it's all about balancing huh? work and also uh, passion at the end of the day. So I have to use the weekends mostly to be able to do what I love. And also another thing, another challenging thing that I, I talked about earlier is um, you might have um, like 30 clients mm -hmm. today and um, the next week you have like two or five clients. So the thing is you have to be consistent. Um, you have to keep on uh, coming up with new bright ideas, exciting ideas mm -hmm. to be able to beat that. Um, and also um, for me what works, I have to like plan ahead. I have to think. Uh, it's not easy coming up with a menu that's going to excite people. So I have to think ahead. And I also have friends who help me a lot. Um, uh, they always send me links, uh, try and do this today, try and do that today, which has really helped me, mm -hmm. yes. So um, yes, there are challenges, but it's how, it's how you work through the challenges that it's going to help you in the end. So you work Monday to Friday? Yes. Then Saturday and Sunday you're cooking for people? Yes. When do you have, ever have time for yourself, or for, for family, or for just close people to you? Uh, at times what I do is, um, uh, I don't do it like every other Sunday. Uh, there are times that uh, some Sundays I'll say, okay, to, uh, I'll just give a notice on my, uh, my page and tell them uh, this Sunday uh, we won't do this and that uh, so that I can have time for family, mm -hmm. uh, I can have time for my friends, and I can also have time for myself because I have to self-develop myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have to develop myself also. Yes, uh, so that's what I do. Do you ever have times when you've cooked so much food and very few people come for it? What do you do with the rest of the food? That's why I do, I, I deal with orders. Yes, I deal with orders. Oh, you don't just blanket cook? I just don't, yeah, mm. I deal with orders. Maybe I can have uh, a pack, because I pack them, I package them, so I can uh, have an excess of like five or six, because there are those people who will call you. <laughs> after you've cooked? Yes, after, like uh, at 4 p.m. or 7 p.m. Do you have food? Yeah, so I always do that. But uh, I believe for me right now, uh, in, uh, I need to do, I need to work with others first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I work with others. So what's the plan, Sally? Have you always wanted to do this? And how do you see it gradually going? Yes, I want to do it in large scale, of course. I want to do it in large scale. But okay, so what I need, number one, is a, a big kitchen. So that is what I'm trying to work out on mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that, is, that is in my plans very soon. Uh, uh, I, I am in talks with some people. I have identified a kitchen that I can be using. Maybe I partner with them. So that is one, oh, that's one thing I want to do, mm -hmm. first have a big kitchen. And then if I can be able to train people on how I do, uh, how, how I do it so that I can have yes. time for myself, you mm -hmm. know, so that when I'm not there, uh, the business is still going on, as in we don't have to halt because uh, I need to go home, uh, maybe uh, do something that has come yeah. up, you know. Yeah. So that is, that, that is my plan for now. Uh, uh, get a large kitchen and also get people on board who can be helping me to be able to deliver my meals. Also, once I get a large kitchen, I know logistics are going to be planned. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing that I want to do. Yeah. Okay. Eric, what's the plan? Oh, for me? Well, I have a lot of things. Yeah, tell, tell us. Why. Like, mostly, first thing is just to mentor people, to just help young people to just find their footing. Because then again, I realized that when you're starting out, there are many, many challenges that you face. It's not even monetary or anything. It's just how to go about it. It's like the major problem. Mm -hmm. So I just want to mentor people, maybe. And then maybe open an art shop at a particular point, because then again, we, we, you know, we, we're in a country or rather in a city where it's really, really hard to source materials, so you're forced to work with what is there. And then uh, maybe I'll have a gallery at one particular point. It'll be, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly I just want to see many people just follow their dreams. It's basically what I feel I can give to people, or rather, which is my plan. Uh, also paint on shoes. Mm -hmm. So I uh, love maybe to have my own line, which is pretty much amazing. How, yes, that. I, yeah. I meant to ask about that. How's yeah. that going? The painting of shoes. Okay. How is the market? Well, the market is just, it's always a misery. Yeah. It's good though, because then again, I can make a living off it. Mm. I don't necessarily just have to paint paintings and just wait for a client to just walk in the studio. How did you come up with that? Uh, for the shoes. Yes. It was an accident. <laughs> Tell us like I was in college, uh, I was painting something on a wall, then some paint just dripped from the shoe. I decided, well, why don't I try it? It came out not so nice. 
In fact, it was worse. But then again, people were like, oh, that's nice. No, like, okay, if I can paint something bad, <laughs> if I can paint something bad and people love it, what yeah. if I just go all wild and just try to do something crazy and amazing on mm -hmm. it? And the reception has been pretty much amazing. At times mixed, because then again, people fail to understand. I do make a living off painting shoes. Mm -hmm. And people always wonder, do you even wear those shoes? How can you wear something which is painted? And I just tell people, it's just, it's just, you just, you just have to try. Uh, most of my clients are ladies, by the way, because I know ladies love color. Yeah. Uh, for men, they'll be like, well, I love my color. Nikes. I don't want my Nikes <laughs> to be destroyed and all that. Yeah, but it's, it's always, it's, I, I, I say it's one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me. Yeah. I want both of you to put us in this space where you just woke up one morning and decided, do you know what, I'm going to turn this into a business. Did, did you get to that point? How did you just decide that this is it, by the way, this is it? Okay. For me, it was from the shoes. Mm -hmm. People liked it. Somebody just actually brought me his shoes. was like, I want you to paint mine, like the way you painted, painted yours. So we painted one pair. He went out, spoke, spread, uh, he spread the good gospel, mm -hmm. and got a few orders. So for me, it was just a hobby. I was in college. I just needed money to get by. Mm -hmm. So it was just, you know, quick money, pesa kidogo here and there. But when I got out, I just asked myself, to the, uh, when I was just out of a job, how I used to make money in college. I used to paint these shoes. Why don't I just give it a try? So I met Patrick Mukabe, who's my mentor. He's, he used to be at Kodown at Center. So I just told him, well, I want to become an artist. This is what I do, nini, nini, nini. He told me, I could give you classes, but you're well on your way. I'm not like a beginner or anything, because then again, for me, it was always finding and trying to just do things on my own. Yeah. So he just told me, my studio is open. You're welcome to do anything and everything you want from that. And four years now, I can say <sighs> I'm still wowed, still in that fright <laughs> zone, you know, astonished at how yeah. I could still make a living off just painting like, my own, color, like coloring how you've not my wall. starved to death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sally, what was this eat moment for you? For me, I can say friends and family. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, actually, I saw the need because um, uh, I saw the need with my friends. They will come home from work, and those who live around me, ever in my house, <laughs> <laughs> to eat. Yes. So I, I decided, why not? Um, people are really tired of cooking. Why can't I do it mm -hmm. for them? You know. Why can't I do it and then get paid for that? So that's actually how I started. Yeah, it was just that easy. And then encouragement from friends and family. Mm -hmm. You know, they encourage you to keep on going. Um, they, uh, they actually give you referrals and they, 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 sh they actually show you where the need is so I can identify my niche. Uh, yeah, that's how I, it came about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've said that some of the plans you have, a big kitchen, train some guys, but I have a problem with that. Most of the time with cooking, there's always a touch from a person. There's that thing that when Sally cooks, even if I tried that recipe step by step, I won't get it. Yes. How do you plan to work with that? Because for people to order your food, it has to do with something about your cooking. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a bit challenging, yeah? That's a bit challenging. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, I have to be there for supervisory mm -hmm. roles. Um, but it's something that can be worked on. It's something that can be done. Because at the end of the day, uh, Kisa, I can't do it alone. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yes, I of can't course. do it alone. Uh -huh. If I want to go large scale, I can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. So I have to get people on board to help me. I have mm -hmm. to train them. Uh, yes, uh, people are going to drop balls at the beginning. But I am sure we can get there. I'm sure we will get there. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are looking at a large scale, probably catering for events at some point? Yes, uh, large scale catering. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have a special niche that I want to focus on. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that's my plan. Mm. Yes. Don't spill the beans here. You will yeah. get someone else doing it <laughs> for you. All right, I would like us to, we're about to wind up, but mm -hmm. there's a young person out there who thinks, I really like drawing. But I don't, th I don't know whether this would be the best job for me to make money, etc. And my dad wants me to be a lawyer. My mom wants me to be an accountant or God knows what. Mm -hmm. What do you do tell that young person who's at crossroads, probably finished high school, they have a talent, but they're just there thinking, I have to go to campus, then get, em get employed? Yeah, for me, I just tell people to just evaluate their dreams. 
-hmm. what is it that you really want to do? Uh, and then, you know, I just tell people just wake from the slumber. Because most of the time, uh, most young people succumb to that feeling of just, you know, I'll just be, I'll just be there. I'll just, maybe I'll pursue it later. Why shelve those dreams? Mm -hmm. You know, like most of the people, most of the inventors, most of the greatest artists, most of the, the, the people who have been there who we really look up to as mentors are people who really decided not to pocket and sit down, yeah. or who just really got up and decided, you know what? Uh, just to hell with everything. I just want to pursue my passion. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, most times, m m most people don't know how to or where to go. I would just urge, uh, just urge them to just walk to any art center because there are a few art centers around and just see how artists you know, get to that zone, get to that environment and see how people do it. Because then again, uh, the know-how is, like the knowledge is really, really what's hindering people from pursuing their passions. I was that young man at one particular point, but you know, thanks God, I, I'm that kid who used to run around, <laughs> around and just uh, you know, I realized that there are many things out there. Mm -hmm. There are many people who are living their dreams, and why shouldn't I just? I love the unknown, so why sh shouldn't I just follow that unknown mm -hmm. that which I feel could be my my ticket out, you know? What about parents and them supporting kids who have talent like? Well, you the parents have to really, really consider you know, thinking otherwise about the future of the kids. Because mm -hmm. then again, you see, you want to become, you want your kid to become a doctor who's gonna employ them when the doctors are striking. Mm -hmm. You want to become a lawyer who's gonna employ you when there's just an influx of people, mm -hmm. you know, from the colleges and all that graduating yeah. and yeah. Uh, employed. So you have to be like really exceptional in that area. You have to cover a niche for yourself. Yeah, well. so, and then you have that, you know, you go get employed as an engineer, you told 35 years of experience. How do you get 35 years of experience <laughs> when you're 25 and you're not employed? You know, it's all about, you know, follow your passion. Mm -hmm. there's, always, there's always that thing which, you are made, which was made for you. There's yeah. that dream which is you are, you mm -hmm. know, meant to pursue and become successful. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's just get up, you know, wake up from the slumber, mm -hmm. see, the, see the world as it is, mm -hmm. open your eyes more. Yeah. yeah. Wake up from your slumber, don't shelve your dreams. True. Just go for it. Once you've identified it, go for it. Sally? Uh, for me, what I would like to tell them is, I know as a person, uh, the beginning is always the hardest. It is always the hardest. And uh, people tend to fear um, on how am I going to start? Is it going to work out for me? Mm -hmm. For me, what I'd advise someone is, if you can do both, let's say you want to go to school or... Uh, you still have your job. If you can do both, for starters, go ahead and just do it. And then as you continue building up, as you continue to learn more about your business, uh, getting new ideas, slowly by slowly, that's when at least you can be able to venture into it slowly. You don't need to, mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if you can do both, for starters, I'll just say just go ahead. If, you, if you're good, uh, uh, you know how to make cookies, baking cookies, make cookies, carry them to the office, sell them for breakfast in the morning, you know. Um, just start slowly. Start small. Yeah, yeah. start small. Mm -hmm. Start small, yeah. That's what I would advise them. You have mentioned something very important. Try out new things. Don't just do what everyone else is doing. Yes, exactly. It's like in this country when quail farming <laughs> came in. Everyone, everyone did it yes. and they spoiled the market. Yeah. So what would you tell that young person? Yes, there are people doing this, but what would make you different? Uh, what would make you different is... Uh, continue learning, uh, continue finding out, read a lot, you know. Actually, I always tell people that, yes, I have a talent in doing something, but find out from within the people that you hang out with, your friends, your family, look for a need. Mm -hmm. Look for a need. It's just there. It's something that uh, you just have to think out of the box. Look for a need. And that's how you'll be able to sell and mm -hmm. be able to start here. Well, thank you so much, guys, for coming in. Uh, quite some inspiring conversation we're having here. Inspiring stories. Sally Aganda, uh, she has an 85 job, but she's decided she'll be cooking for you guys who are tired. So you can go to our Facebook page. It's uh, Sunday, Sunday Brunching by, with, Sally. by Sally. Sunday Brunching by Sally. Go to her Facebook page. You need someone to cook for you for the whole week. Give you a healthy menu for the whole week. She's the person to hit you up. And if you want art like this, you want to get your shoes all um, drawn on and look very cool. Eric, Eric, do you have any page? Uh, yeah, there's a page, Sticky Customs, mm -hmm. but I mostly use my Facebook account because then again, I'm an... What um, is your Facebook account? I'm called Eric Sticky Murethi. 
Eric Sticky Murethi. Yes, you can look them up on Facebook. Thank you so much, guys, for coming in. Once again, Sally Aganda, chef. And um, Eric Sticky Murethi, he is an artist. Graffiti, everything. Illustrations, what else did you say? Animation. Animation, Dance. everything. Thank you so much for coming in. This was Weekend Express. Thank you very much for being with us from 7 a.m. to now. I'll see you guys at 1 p.m. as I give you news updates of the day. My name is Akisa Wandera. Good morning.